It turns out that the basic structure of a discrete event simulator is really, really simple. Uh, essentially, we have to think about the following system. We have a we have some kind of an event, and this event causes some other events. Let's call this event one. We'll call this event two, and they'll just abbreviate that to E. So this is E three, and then E three in turn leads to E four, and this leads to e, and leads to E five. Let's say, and E two leads to some other events. And what I'm drawing over here, actually, as you can see, is time. And let's just say that the position along the axis represents the time. So, so this event over here happens at this time. This happens at this time. This happens at this time. This happens at this time, and so on. So, I'm just drawing these lines to indicate the times at which these events happened. So, uh, if the initial event was event one, which is this thing I'm putting in the box over here, then we know for sure that. The first event that happened was event one, is the initial event. But if you look at event two and three, uh, we want to be uh, evaluating the impact of event two on the system, on the simulation state space before three, because two happens before three, and it's possible that two might cause some effects over here. It can cause some side effects, which three then depends on. So there may be some global variables, for example, that two updates that three depends on. So it's very important that E2 must come before E3. And then what happens is that E3, E2 goes and creates some other events. And let us say, you know, E3, for example, puts an event over here, let's say E10, which comes before all the others over here. So even though E2 comes before E3, if E3 creates an event that happens very soon in time over here, E10, then E10 must go first because, again, E10 may cause some side effects which can impact these other events that are drawn over here. With this discussion, it becomes very clear that what we really need to do is something like this. We have a sorted list of events. And what we do is we, we, we maintain this all the time. So we maintain a sorted list. We pick the first, the first event. And then we uh, simulate that event. We do whatever the event, uh, simulate the event, which means, which means update the state space. And quite often, when the simulator, uh, the event is simulated, it is going to generate more events. And what are we going to do with them? We're just going to put them back into the, uh, we're going to put them into the sorted list in the right position. And uh, yeah, until done. So here is it is do, and in this do we're going to say okay pick the first event simulate it, generate more events, place them in the sorted list until done, and that's it. That's the entire simulation loop, and essentially all discrete event simulators are going to be uh, uh, implementing some version of this basic loop. Now uh, the things to watch out for is that the simulation of the event is going to update the state space. And uh, we're going to, uh, therefore, reflect the updated state space in the future events. And so the interaction between the different events is through the globals, which in fact is the state space. Um, how does this work? Let's take a look over here. So event one is uh, executed. And event one says, I'm going to spawn two events, two and three. And these are the times, so E2 and E3 are the times. So the first one that's uh, of the two in the sorted list is E2. So E2 goes off and creates more events, which are these times. And then the next event to be executed is 3. So E3 executes and says, oh, my next event is E10, and then there's some other events over here. So E10 and get executed, and so on and so forth. So all the events execute, but the strict time ordering between events is maintained. And because of the strict time ordering, we're able to maintain, we're going to ensure that the state space, which is the way in which global effects are propagated, is properly maintained.